Well, here we are, part eight of the How I Retouch Photoshop tutorial series, brought to you by tutvid.com. Uh, like I've been saying all along, this is a this is the the eighth step in my retouching process, uh, dating back to a tutorial that I did, which was just like a general overview of the steps I take when I retouch an image. We're up to the color grading part of things. If you want to know how we did everything that's been done up to this point, go back to part one, start from there, and watch your way up to here. You've got an image, you can download this image and follow along. I've got actions that I'm giving you along the way. Um, in fact, at, with this tutorial down in the description, there's going to be a link to download some gradients that you can use for your gradient maps when you're doing your own color grading. So we're going to talk about gradient map color grading, but we're also going to talk about color balance and curves for color grading as well. Let's begin with curves. And actually, before we jump in, I am selling a course on how to retouch images. Uh, if you pick it up, that's amazing. It helps Help support .com. helps me get a bigger, better studio, more camera stuff going on, and just great stuff in the future. Uh, check it out. There's a, a card that just appeared on this video. Let's go ahead and add a curves adjustment layer here. Now in curves, curves is great, of course, because you can drag up to make your image brighter, drag down to make your image darker, but Part of the thing that I love so much about curves is the ability to access and have incredible control over individual color channels. So let's go to the red color channel. You can see if I pull up on my line, I get a lot of red. I pull down, get a lot of cyan. Cyan is the opposite of red, incidentally. Um, now, one of the things that I want to look at is my histogram. So I have a lot of pixels right here that's saying, look, you are, you are stacked to the, the gills with these pixels here. And I'd be willing to bet that this part of the line, this is the part of the line that's representing all of this sky color out here. So if I grab my little finger tool and I look, you can see, yeah, when I hover over the sky, see the little circle there that appears on the path? That's saying that where I'm hovering, yep, all of this, it's, uh, it's all that stuff right in there. So that was a pretty good guess. What I want to do is I want to add a little bit of red to the skin. So the skin up here on her forehead is kind of this area up to the north of the sky. So I'm going to plant a little uh, a point right there just to kind of hold things in place a little bit. And I'm going to plant another point up here, and I'm going to use my arrow keys to nudge that new point up a little bit. It's going to add a little bit of red up here into the highlights. Uh, and do I want to pull down in the shadowy areas and make that a little bit more uh, full of cyan? Probably not. I'm going to add a point down there and just pull that line back into line with my original line. That's a lot of lines. All right, so if I shut my curves layer off, you can see it's a very, very subtle difference. Let's go to the green channel. And maybe if we pull down on green, we're going to get magenta. I don't like magenta. I think this image actually needs a little bit more green. So I'm just going to throw a few drips of green in, just, just roughly dropping them in there. Uh, and then blue. So if I pull down on blue, I'm going to get yellow. If I pull up on blue, obviously I get blue. Um, I kind of think the highlights need a little bit of yellow. And maybe the shadow needs just, I mean, just ever so slight bit of blue. You want to be careful. If you do this effect too hard, like you put too much blue in the shadows and too much yellow in the highlights, you will very, very quickly get like a, a bad iteration of uh, like a Lomography type effect, like a retro Lomo effect. So you can see there's before. It's got almost like this magenta blue haze to it. And we fix it, and we get this nice, beautifully colored, almost warmed up image. And maybe to warm it up even more, uh, we could go color balance here. And we can throw into the midtones. We're working in the midtones here. Throw some yellow into the midtones and also a little red just to warm things in those midtones just a little bit. So there's before, there would be after. So that's how I would color grade with curves. Let's shut those two layers off. We'll come back to them in a second. And let's do, let's work with color balance. Uh, all right, so let's, uh, with the midtones here, do we want to add some reds? Yeah, probably some reds. That's good. Uh, I know the image needs a drip or two of green, so let's, let's kick some greens into there. Blue, I don't think so, but also it, it barely needs any yellow either. Be careful going too far one way or the other because it, it can just start to mess stuff up, man. All right, there we go. Cool. All right, let's go shadows. And again, the shadows, a drip or two of blue in the shadows, just it, it lends itself to a more cinematic look. Um, again, if you go too crazy with it, you start getting to like teenage girl on Tumblr, you know, crying about the ex-boyfriend look. We don't really want that. Uh, maybe a drip or two of magenta is cool. And then you can play and look to see what feels right. I actually think red. Uh, initially, I thought cyan would work, but I kind of want red in my shadows. That looks cool. And then with highlights, again, we can just drag some yellows in. Uh, I really don't think blue is going to work in the highlights. It just gives us a very bad, I don't know what. But again, too much yellow also looks really, really bad. Uh, so just a few drips of yellow. Again, we're just looking to influence the colors. We want this to be a beautiful, easy-to-look-at image with smooth tones, smooth colors. 
when somebody looks at it, it's you almost want it to be like they don't want to stop looking at it. They can't believe what they're looking at to a certain extent. It's just amazing. It's dazzling them. And this high contrast, blast your eyeballs out of your head look, um, it's not really going to do that. So uh, magenta for the highlights, no. Probably a drip or two of green. Again, very light on the green. We don't want her to look toxic. She is not Lou Ferrigno. All right, we're going to add a little bit of red to the highlights as well. There we go, cool. All right, so... There's before, there's after. So it's definitely a different look with color balance. Um, in fact, I will name this color balance grading, just so I know that that's what that is. And these bottom two are for curves. And last but not least, we can color grade using a gradient map. This is probably my favorite way to color grade. Um, it's really pretty cool. Uh, it's a pretty effective way to color grade as well. So what we do is we basically create or we, we select the color that we want to be mapped to the darkest pixels. So uh, one of the easy go-tos that you can always use is like a, a very desaturated pink color. Let me just bring it back to hues. A very desaturated, almost like burgundy wine-ish uh, color for your shadows, for the shadowy parts of your image, and kind of like a, a washed out beige for the highlights. Uh, this is one, if you've watched other tutorials that I've done, you've probably seen this. I don't want to go too bright on the highlights, hit OK. And you can see we just have this very like smooth transition of like wine to cracker color. Uh, and in fact, I will, I will create a new gradient here. I'll call it wine, uh, wine tone. And I'll hit new because this will be one of the gradients I include in the download so you can check it out for yourself. Hit OK. And then in order to sort of mesh these colors to your image, you want to set this layer to the blend mode of soft light. Uh, and you can see there's before, there's after. Now, part of the problem, part of the issue with a gradient map for color grading is while it does give you just, just dynamite tones across the board and just wraps the color into them so beautifully, it increases contrast. So when working with a gradient map, I always try to reduce contrast almost preemptively. So I would boost my blacks, boost my whites, but really what I'm doing is flattening my blacks and flattening my whites a little bit. And this is just getting the image ready for my gradient map. Now you may be thinking, oh, well, why did we in the last uh, in the last tutorial, why did we do all the different contrast adjustments that we did if we knew we were just going to flatten things out again? Well, sometimes you might not want to, but in this case, maybe you don't want to use gradient map to uh, color grade your image, in which case you're going to need all that contrast adjustment. So again, I'm just giving you options here. Um, and, and you can see here that we still, all that toning made a big difference anyway. So there still is a lot of use for that. So I will almost preemptively go in and flatten my layer a little bit and then apply a gradient map, set it to soft light. And of course you can reduce or increase the opacity or even duplicate it if you want to really intensify the effect. But again, that looks kind of bad. And it's very easy with gradient maps to just double click the gradient map and decide, you know what? I don't like these colors. I want this to be something more like, you know, a very deep blue in the shadows. Right? Maybe a deeper, more saturated blue in the shadows and something like a, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe more a little bit of green influence here in the highlights. Right, Something like a beachy green in the highlights. Hit OK. And you can see that this color grade looks different. So in fact, I'm going to call this blue uh, beach green. All right, so I'll create a new gradient. This will be one that I include as well. So you've got this option. Uh, you could do something here. I've got this like super, you know, Blastaruski, you know, green orange. And now this gradient is almost always meant to be, you know, reduce, reduce, reduce that opacity, which means we also don't need nearly as much contrast adjustment. I don't think this uh, tone necessarily works on this image, but there's some images where it works and it, it really does a uh, killer job. Uh, we've got uh, a gradient here, which is just sort of like a blue, dark blue to light blue. You can see that almost gives you this, you know, feeling like it was shot almost at night, right before the sun was getting ready to go down. In order to really sell the effect, you would probably want to make your image a little bit darker, maybe not lose as much contrast as we're losing, you know, tone, tone back the gradient map a little bit. But you can see with gradient maps, you can very quickly do, a, you know, there's so many different ways to color grade your image in Photoshop. So we've got our gradient map technique. We've got our color balance technique, and we've got our original curves with color balance technique, all giving us three very different moods for our image. Um, my favorite is, my go-to has always been gradient map, um, but I also almost always mix it with a little color balance as well, if I'm being honest with you. Because, um, you know, I might look at this and decide, you know what, this is great, but I really want a little bit more magenta in the shadows. And it's so fast and easy to just go color balance, boom, shadows, magenta, voila, done deal. You know what I mean? It's so easy to do that. And you've got the look that you want. 
So when you color grade your image in Photoshop, nothing is really off the table. Do it according to your taste. In fact, there's actually, let me show you this. There's an amazing website out there called moviesincolor.com. And this guy goes through and he picks out scenes of movies and he shows you like, look, here are all the colors that went into the lights, into the mediums, into the darks, right? This, these are, these are your, the brightest tones. These are your mid tones. These are your shadows, right? Highlights, mid tones, shadows. He does it with so many different films and there's just such great information here. If you love looking at color and trying to figure out what made this scene work versus that scene work in this film. You can look here. There's all these beautiful, subtle light tones, some great rich medium tones, mid tones, and some great rich shadowy tones. And then there's also this general spectrum. So you can even model if you have a specific shot, and this guy has done it, you know, with the shot that you're looking at. If you find a specific shot you like, you can almost model your color grading after the information he has on that website. So moviesincolor.com is a great little tool for color grading and color graders all over the place. So for color grading in Photoshop and figuring out and working with beautiful tones, whether it's highlight, mid-tone, or shadow, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanoDodsonTutfood.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Today's Moment of Brilliance is brought to us by Confucius. He says, I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and I understand. Sometimes it just takes doing it before we actually understand why or how something works, which is all the more reason to just jump into that project you're scared of. Go ahead and do that thing you think is impossible because once you actually do it, you're going to understand how it all works and you're going to want to do it over and over and over again. It's a beautiful thing. Go ahead and hit the like button for this video. Also, subscribe to my channel if you haven't and also up here in the corner, right up there, you can sign up for my newsletter. And when you sign up for my newsletter, I send you a free course, 30 tips and tricks on how to work with Photoshop so much faster and much more effectively, by the way. You can also follow me on Snapchat, on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook. Take it easy, guys.